Let's talk for a minute about negative numbers. Let's think about what happens if we take a square root of a negative number. For example, the square root of negative 4, what could it be? Well, we know that the square root of 4 is 2, because 2 to the second power really does equal 4. Does the square root of negative 4 equal negative 2? No. If we take negative 2 to the second power, that means negative 2 times another negative 2. That's positive 4. Huh. What could it be? What happens if I put it into my calculator? Well, square root negative 4. I get an error message. It says error, non-real answer. Let's talk about what this means. To answer certain subtraction questions, we needed the negative numbers. For example, when we wanted to take 3 minus 5, that gave us negative 2. When we put together the positive whole numbers with their negatives, we have the integers. Any subtraction question that we can ask can be answered with an integer. To answer certain division questions, we needed the fractions. For example, 3 divided by 5 is 3 fifths. By writing every possible fraction of integers, we get the rational numbers. We can answer every integer division question with a rational number, uh, provided we aren't dividing by zero. That's just a completely nonsensical question that we can ignore. So that's actually a little bit weird. Even at the point of division, things got a little bit weird. At the point of taking square roots, things get super weird. To take certain square roots, we introduced the irrational numbers, but we got more than we bargained for. I mean, sure, square root of 2 is an irrational number, but so is this number with the pattern of zeros and ones after the decimal point. This number is an irrational number, but it's not a square root. And now it seems like even with the irrational numbers thrown in, it seems like we still don't have a square root of negative 4. The rational and the irrational numbers together make up the real numbers. The real numbers are the numbers that make up the number line. You remember the number line. We've got 0 in the middle, and then over here we have the positive numbers, and over here we have the negative numbers. We filled in some fractions. For example, here we have the fraction negative 2 thirds. And it turns out that the irrational numbers, in a sense, fill in the number line. We have, for example, square root of 2, which lives somewhere around here. And square root of 3 lives somewhere closer to there. The irrational numbers are still numbers on the number line. It makes sense to talk about them being positive or negative, and it makes sense to write them in inequalities. For example, root 2 is less than root 3. Those are the real numbers. And one of, and one of the things that we can say about the real numbers is any real number Either it's over here to the right of 0 and it's positive, it's to the left of 0 and it's negative, or it's right at 0. If we square a real number, the result is never negative. Okay, where am I going with this? Do you remember why 7 divided by 0 was undefined? Well, 7 divided by 0 equals what answers the question what times 0 equals 7? But it turns out that for any real number x, x times 0 is 0, not 7 at all. So 7 divided by 0 doesn't have any answer. 
7 divided by 0 is undefined. The square root of negative 4 is also undefined. The question square root of negative 4 equals what? Answers the question, what number squared gives me negative 4? But for any real number x, x squared is positive or 0. Either it's a positive times a positive, and therefore a positive, or a negative times a negative, and therefore a positive. Or maybe it's 0, 0 times 0 is 0. Never negative. So the question, what squared equals negative 4, has no answer. The square root of negative 4 is undefined. Now, previously, when we had questions with no answer available, we invented some new numbers. We invented some new numbers in order to give certain subtraction problems an answer. We invented some new numbers in order to give some division problems an answer. And in fact, we invented some new numbers in order to give some of the numbers square roots. Why don't we just invent some new numbers to be 7 divided by 0, or the square root of negative 4? And the answer is that we can. But if we invent numbers to answer these questions, they break some of the other rules of math. Things like the distributive property might break down, or the properties of equality, or the properties of inequality. So at this point, we are not going to invent new numbers to answer this question or to answer this question. It might be the case that in your next math class, you do meet the numbers that we invent in order to give negative 4 a square root. But we're not going to meet them in this class. As far as this class is concerned, the square root of negative 4 is undefined.